The last and final part of aerobic respiration is called electron transport phosphorylation. Um, basically, it's a fancy electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So remember, the mitochondria has a double membrane, an outer membrane, and then an inner membrane. And the proteins that make up the electron transport chain are in that inner folded membrane. And since the membrane is folded, it creates a larger surface area over which um, ATP can be made and more ATP are made and that makes the whole process incredibly efficient. So what happens is the NADH and the FADH2 from stages 1 glycolysis and 2 the Krebs cycle come and give the electrons to the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain creates a hydrogen ion gradient and that's what finally makes the ATP. Um, the final electron acceptor is oxygen and that forms the byproduct of water. So this is our general overview, and now we're going to go through it in more detail. Okay, so here is the electron transport chain. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane, so this is inside the mitochondria, and this is the space between the inner and outer membrane. Here's an example. Here's NADH. This could be FADH2. NADH comes along. It gives the electron to the electron transport chain. The electron is going to flow through the electron transport chain, giving off packets of energy at every step. Those packets of energy are used to pump hydrogen ions from inside to outside. So they're going against the concentration gradient, so this would be a form of active transport. And the energy to allow this active transport comes from the electron transport chain. This sets up a hydrogen ion gradient, so there's going to be lots of hydrogens outside and hardly any hydrogens inside because they're all pumped against the concentration gradient outside the cell. Once that hydrogen ion gradient is established, um, here you can see lots of hydrogens outside, very little hydrogens inside, the hydrogens want to diffuse back into the cell. Right? They want to go from high to low concentration. The problem is that hydrogens are charged. And we learned that charged molecules can't directly go through the phospholipids. This molecule here is called the ATP synthase. And the ATP synthase is the only protein in that membrane that will allow the hydrogens to flow back in. So every time a hydrogen flows through the ATP synthase, an, an ADP joins with a phosphate to create ATP. So this is how we make the majority of our ATP. Hydrogens go from high to low concentration through the ATP synthase, and that synthesizes many ATP. Now, in order to keep this, maintain this concentration gradient, we need to use this hydrogen. We need to get rid of it so that there's still a high concentration outside and a low concentration inside. And remember from that electron transport chain, we also have those electrons. We need to get rid of those too, otherwise the electron transport chain is going to get um, backed up and we're no longer going to create the hydrogen ion gradient. So oxygen is a small molecule. It diffuses in, and we breathe in the oxygen through respiration. It diffuses into the mitochondria and oxygen joins with hydrogen creating water. So hydrogen and oxygen join together to create water, and since our body is mostly made up of water, that's fine. So that's how we get rid of the hydrogens and the extra and the electrons. They join with oxygen, creating water. So if we look at the sum total of aerobic respiration, we made two ATP in glycolysis, two ATP in the Krebs cycle, and through the ATP synthase and the hydrogen ion gradient, we made 32 ATP and electron transport phosphorylation. So in total, aerobic respiration created 36 ATP.